So why is it that I only get posters from the mediocre movies that I attend advanced screenings for? I never get any for the good ones. I didn't get one for Lego Batman. Where were you on that one, Warner Brothers? Well, anyway, Unforgettable. A movie that's probably not going to live up to its name. Unforgettable stars Rosario Dawson as Julie. Julie is currently with David, played by Jeff Stoltz. David used to be married to Tessa, played by Katherine Heigl. They have a child together, Lily, played by Isabella Kai Rice. Tessa is fucking crazy. Mostly because her mother is fucking crazy and basically passed that on to her daughter. And because she is fucking crazy, she cannot handle her ex-husband and daughter living with someone else. And she sets out to ruin that relationship by any means necessary. And pretty soon, shit hits the fan. And that's pretty much it. I just did in one minute what the movie took an hour and 40 to do. I have seen far worse, to be sure. Far worse. But this was not very good. And really, when you have a movie where one of your characters says the word YOLO, unironically, you're doing something wrong. Even if she says it ironically, you're still walking thin ice. Combine that with the fact that you have a first-time director, albeit a director who's not new to Hollywood, just new to the director's chair, and also one of the writers was the writer of Shut In. Remember Shut In? I don't blame you if you don't, but yeah. Gives you a pretty good idea of the kind of thing you're in for. This was one of the stranger early screenings I have ever been to. I got there about an hour ahead of time because they always overbook these things to ensure a full house. So I figure, you know, if I want to have a seat, got to get there early. That turned out to not be a problem because I ended up walking into the theater about 45 minutes before showtime. Lot of empty seats. In fact, one of the people running the screening actually made an announcement and said, hey, if you guys have any friends that you want to invite, go ahead, call them up, bring them down, because the first 100 people that show up, whether they have a pass or not, I'm letting them in. I have never seen anything like this. I've been to screenings where they didn't have a full house before, but nothing like this, not where they're literally begging people to call your friends and get some butts in the seats, please, because this looks really bad. This movie begins with a flash forward. Now, there are two ways that you can do a flash forward. The right way to do it is to give your audience just a little taste of what's to come and make them want to find out how the hell you got to that point. The wrong way, and the way this movie did it, I'm sorry to say, is by giving your audience a little taste of what's to come and just completely spelling out exactly how you're gonna get to that point so there's no mystery to it at all. Weak. And it does not take long at all for this movie to get into the unintentional hilarity. The very first scene with Katherine Heigl, she is sitting in front of a mirror with her daughter by her side, very slowly putting on makeup with this completely dead expression on her face, just cold and emotionless, and she takes some perfume, dabs a little bit on her daughter's wrist, and some on her own, and then she turns to her daughter and says, there, now you're perfect, just like mommy. not doing anything whatsoever to hide the fact that this woman is completely batshit insane. <laughs> and I'm just looking at this and thinking, oh, oh dear. It's gonna be one of those kinds of movies, isn't it? All right, at least I didn't pay for it. And to be fair, Heigl's performance is probably the most unforgettable thing about this movie because she is just so over the top, and it could not be any more obvious that this woman is completely off her rocker. Although, that does raise the question, her ex-husband David seems like a pretty together guy. Seems like a very nice guy. So, how the hell did he and Tessa end up together in the first place? I mean, I get the physical attraction, sure, but... They stayed together long enough to get married and have a kid, not necessarily in that order, but still, just how? 
And the movie tries to cover this up by having a bunch of people repeatedly say, oh, she wasn't always like this. There was a time when she was actually very sweet. No, 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 I'm not buying it. I am not. There is no way that this woman has not been like this for her entire fucking life. I think Unbelievable would have been a better title for this movie. <laughs> Because it certainly is. There's a lot of unbelievable stuff. Very early on, Tessa decides she wants to destroy David and Julia's relationship, so she tries to dig up as much dirt on Julia as possible. And she does this by going online and doing a public record search. And this is apparently the easiest thing in the world to do, at least in this movie's universe. All you have to do is go to this one website, type in the person's name, don't need a middle name or anything, just first and last name, and there you go! There's all her records, including a photograph. How did they get this photograph when this woman is not on social media at all? I don't know, but they have it. It's not a driver's license photo or anything, it's like a vacation photo, but somehow they got it. And somehow she is the only Julia Banks in the entirety of the United States, because it's the only result that comes up, and it comes up immediately. Really? I would think this would require slightly more effort, especially since Julia is not on social media at all. And if you think that's unbelievable, there's actually a very good reason for that, because she has a crazy ex-boyfriend, a guy named Michael Vargas, who apparently flipped out and beat the shit out of her one day, so she got a restraining order, and she's not on social media because she doesn't want to advertise her whereabouts in case he tries to look her up again. Which is actually very smart. Unfortunately, she was not smart enough to secure her phone with a good password. She made one based on her birth date. Don't do that, by the way. Just, just don't. And when Tessa unlocks the phone, she finds a copy of the restraining order on there. Don't ask me why that's there. And she finds the guy's name, and once again, types it into the search engine. And boom! There he is! Again, somehow the only Michael Vargas in all of the United States of America. I don't even believe he's the only Michael Vargas in California, much less the rest of the country. This whole process really should have been much more difficult and much more time consuming. And the sad thing is, this character is completely out of her mind. I could totally see her spending hours just poring over records and trying to find out more information about Julia and the movie just completely cheaps out on it. It's like, missed opportunity. And apparently Tessa is also a teleporter, because there's a scene where she sneaks into the house to steal some of Julia's stuff, and as she's about to leave, the front doorbell rings, so she has to sneak out a side door or a back door or something, and somehow, 30 seconds later, she's driving up the driveway pretending like she just arrived to deliver some of her ex-husband's mail that was delivered to her place by mistake. Now, unless she is an Olympic sprinter, there is no way she could have done it that fast. Actually, even if she is an Olympic sprinter, she's constantly wearing these tight, form-fitting dresses and high heels. You ain't sprinting in that. No fucking way. And apparently, teleportation runs in the family because Lily can do it too. There's a scene where her and Julia are at some county fair, and Julia answers a phone call, and she's on the phone for like five seconds, and the kid is just gone. Like, completely vanished off the face of the earth, just phased out of reality. Gone. How? I know kids are prone to run away when parents aren't paying attention, but it still takes them a little time to do that. Now, the movie almost redeems itself at the very end, when Tessa just goes completely off the rails and has her final big showdown with Julia, and honestly, I kind of dug their big fight at the end. That was a lot of fun to watch and pretty brutal, far more than I expected. It's just a shame I had to sit through so much crap to get to that point. So I guess if there's anything we can learn from this movie, it's don't fuck crazy. Because that seems to be what gets everyone in trouble here. Just do not fuck crazy. Guys, don't put your dick in crazy. Ladies, don't let crazy put its dick in you. Just don't. It never ends well. Also, don't secure your phone with a password that's based on your birth date. God damn it, why would you do that? But there are better ways to learn these things than by sitting through a mediocre movie. If you're at all curious about this movie, I would say maybe wait for Redbox, but that's as high of a recommendation as I'm gonna give it. And that about wraps it up for Unforgettable. 
and I don't think it was. Till next time, take care.